everyone, George here with another video. Now, for the life of me, I don't remember if I've already done a video of this nature, but um, advanced, advanced quad leader, yeah, advanced quad leader, advanced, it should be advanced quad leader, how can I get the name wrong? Anyway, uh, I don't remember quite frankly if I did a video of this nature, but uh, it's worthwhile revisiting the topic again, especially when um, it involves things that I've grown to appreciate and love uh, in Advanced Squad Leader, although they are known um, by the community as sleaze. Well, get your mind out of the gutter and um, see what we can do. Uh, I'm now up in the upper right hand corner so you can see everything. Um, top five and one on. See if we can talk about it. All right, we'll start with number five, the infamous skulking squeeze. Yes, skulking sleeves. Fix that. There we go. That's better. Skulking. So as the defender, you pop out, uh, or yeah. Pop attacker during your movement phase and uh, reappear during your advance phase you essentially have forfeited your att the attacker an opportunity to break you in in their uh, in their phase and they'll have to uh, either prep fire or incur um, defensive fire while they're moving uh, in order to uh, achieve their objective so essentially it's denying uh, your opponent, the uh, um, the on you, uh, and um, basically waste the player turn uh, with no achievement whatsoever. So how does that work? Uh, let's let's see if we can do an example here. I already set up a board. This. So basically, let's take a look at this example right here. Let me center it uh, on to the best of my ability. Here you go. Now, let's say this is um, the Russian's player turn, and he has an opportunity to, to uh, fire on this fire group here. This fire group here is trying to... Uh, take building November 2. So we have a 4 plus 7, that makes a 11, plus 4 is 15. So there is no 15 on the infantry fire uh, table, but there is a 12. So that would, what would amount to a 12 firepower attack up to because of the stone wall. Let's say this fellow has a uh, wall advantage and it's mandatory wall advantage. There's no point in putting a wall advantage counter here because he does have a mandatory wall advantage. Um, so if you stay against the wall uh, and try to break up this fire group during the, uh, the German defensive fire phase, what can ensue is that if his attack was completely useless, then what will ensue is a 12 up 2 attack. Uh, conversely, what could happen is each each squad fires a 4 up 2, which is not really a great shot, and then the leader directed shot would be a 6 up 1, plus 2 for the wall, minus 1 for, um, minus one for the leadership there. Now the best way really to approach this target would be to have the leader on one of the two flanks and that would give you a 6-up-1 attack, and then these guys can fire group together for an 8-up-2 attack. Uh, but let's leave it as is and see what the choices are for the uh, Russian player. So for the Russian player, he can forfeit his, his, um, his uh, prep fire, because as the old axiom uh, goes, nothing good happens in prep fire, and use his movement to skulk back here. And then these fellows have no attack uh, against them. 
because they are now just moved out of their LOS. And what would ensue in the German player turn, well, before we get to the German player turn, this fellow would probably ad advance back. They're running out of time. They have to go. The Germans are running out of time. They have to capture building in two. So the other have to incur uh, a point blank attack or incur another prep fire or a opportunity fire to try to dislodge him from this defensive position there. Okay. Uh, let's see what would have happened if I stood my ground and prep fired. And usually what I would have to do is prep fire here to uh, break this guy and break the break fire, the ability for them to fire group. So that would be uh, an eight uh, firepower attack plus two for the uh, uh, wooden building minus one for my leader. So we're talking about an eight up one attack against them. Let's see what roll, what would happen if I roll on the infantry fire table. Uh, seven plus one is eight. That would be a normal, but I still have right with the LMG. So a normal. First a leader, eight or less, morale check. Uh, passes, now it's an eight or less for the squad. Oh, the squad breaks. So that, it wouldn't have been too bad if that was the outcome. Okay, not bad at all. But let's say this guy did not break, and now we do a 12 up 2 attack. Uh, let's get rid of the DM. 12 up 2 attack against the rush. Uh, 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 on the 12th chart is another normal. Let's see if Dotsky makes it. Ralchuk makes it. And now 9 or less for the 6 to 8 makes it. Oh well. They just uh, prep fired and forfeited the ability to move into the uh, objective. Oh well. Well that's a good uh, example of, of skulking if I may add. Um, boop. Um, conversely if, these, if this guy was on the attack they could all skulk back one location possibly. Uh, and there might be a line of sight from here to there. Let's take a look. Curious, George. Nope. Wow. Cool. Okay. Let's get rid of the move. Let's go back to our PowerPoint for number four. Uh, number four. Go here. Crew control sleeves. Vehicles cannot control buildings, but crews, MMCs can. Building control and uh, hex control. Building control, A26.1, um, kind of explains how you gain building control. Uh, and uh, you need a multi-man counter, and a crew is a multi-man counter. Whereas hex control, as defined after uh, under alpha 26.13, states that uh, a vehicle can only control a hex. So what do we mean by that? Let's go back to the board. Here it is. Here's this baby right here. And um, granted, the moment he comes here or here, he can be subject to a, a street uh, assault. But um, uh, basically what would happen here is um, we go one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say he failed to do a street control. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. He's too far. Let's see if we can roll uh, for excessive speed breakdown, but that wouldn't be too wise. Uh, 12, and he turns his turret the other way. And he's one turn away now. He would be in motion because he moved uh, 12. Uh, all right, so let's use uh, another example. Let's, let's uh, do it this way. All right, pretty straightforward. Let's say his starting position is here. He starts for one, 
two, three, four, five, six. The crew comes out, so bad things. Six, seven stops, and then the expense may perhaps a quarter um, of his movement phase, so a crew can come out, wreck. No, let's get an abandoned counter. All right, let's uh, see if we can find an abandoned counter here. Okay. Vassal does these things sometimes. Uh, let's say info, other, unit, vehicle. Uh, let's see, motion, buttoned up, crew exposed, bad things, abandoned. Boink. And then go back to the... Uh, Counter tray, get yourself a uh, a axis crew. Right, he's under probably hazardous movement at the moment, but let's say he survives all attacks. And then in the advanced phase, he hops into this building. Now he has control of the building. Now it, I understand that it's unrealistic for to do this tactic with these guys present. And they represent 12, at least 12 firepower factors in a point blank attack with a 24 flamethrower. That's a different story. But basically, that's the crux of the tactic is basically you abandon the, the, the vehicle, use your crew to gain control of a victory location, like a building. Because it, it is an MMC and it's an elite MMC. So if you break this fellow, you'll note that the square box. Um, denotes that he can self-rally. He doesn't need a leader to come back to life. Break him. So that is basically building controls with crews. Caveat emptor, uh, uh, quite often not. This tactic is uh, forbidden or verboten by SSR for good reasons. It drives not pay players nuts. Okay. Let's go back to our, our PDF or PowerPoint, rather. All right, that was crew control. Pyro sleeves. Use smoke and fire to funnel attacks and blind a defender. Remember under Alpha 26.16, right, uh, VC for forfeiture and kindling is not applicable. Well, we VC forfeiture is under Alpha 26.16, and it basically states that if you intentionally um, put fire to a, uh, a building location, then that building location automatically counts uh, for the victory conditions for the attacking player. All fine and dandy. So uh, that's one thing you have to be aware of. And the other thing that you are, are, should be finally aware of is most scenarios already forbid this tactic by SSR where you see in the weather conditions uh, kindling is not applicable. However, if you're gifted with a, a, a satchel charge or a flamethrower and you have uh, attackers coming close to you, challenging you as a defender with, with a, a flamethrower in your OB, uh, that's not to say you shouldn't use it. So back to our example, Um, let's say this was the situation. Let's get rid of this guy here, put him back. Let's delete this fellow here. Dotsky is way off here. And somehow, who managed to get in here without a scratch? You use the flamethrower, which is a, a 12 attack, a 2x is away. If it was here, it, was, it would be a 24 attack. All right, 24 attack from face-to-face, uh, -face, and uh, you roll on the IFT. 5 on the 24, 5 on the 24, um, wow, that's a K slash 4. Um, there is no uh, DRM uh, for the building on, on the flamethrower attack, it's a 24 flat. I rolled a 5. That 
by definition can cause a flame. Perfect example for once in a long time. That can cause a flame. So uh, basically let's resolve the attack first. A K4, so it's, it's random selection as to who gets the K result. Um, leader, top to bottom. Leader becomes wounded. So he becomes wounded. Wound, 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 right there. Let's do a wound check. He's still alive. And now a two check for each person, which is, uh, he's wounded, so it's five or less. And five or less. Now they're both broken. And then uh, break and break. Now we have to check for a flame. And the way you do that is in chapter B, you look at the kindling number. There's one number for the spread that's uh, a blaze moving, uh, uh, spreading, uh, a flame spreading um, across. So there's one for spreading fire. That's that's uh, Bravo 25.6. And those, yeah, 25.6. And that's used to see if a, uh, a blaze will spread a... Um, a flame to a location and the kindling attempt or the kindling number is if um, you have a, a flame causing uh, a blaze so in this case it's a stone building it's not fortified therefore and the ECs are moderate so there's no modification uh, for a stone building you need eight or, uh, or more so let's see nope no blaze but conceivably, if I rolled an 8 on the 2d6, I would have had one of these babies. And then, subsequent to this player turn in the advanced phase, I would have to roll A um, to see if a, a blaze incurred from the flame. Or try to hamper it. Now, where is that? Fortify, destroy, uh, flame and blaze. Boom. Conceivably, that can occur. Now, that's one example. The other example is, is if you have units approaching through uh, uh, a path that is very congested and you have the good old flamethrower, start putting, <laughs> start using your flamethrower and start putting the village on fire. <laughs> and at times by SSR, you could have the scenario starting with a blaze and flames going all over the place, which adds to the chaos. Oh well, let's start with now number two. Backblast avoidance. Use opportunity fire to avoid backblast penalty. Let me show you a quick and easy example. Now, first and foremost, you have to uh, make sure that you do have the ability to produce a Panzerfaust. So let's see if uh, I can demonstrate an example here. Back our board. All right, so let's bring back Dotsky. Let's put these guys back where they came from and un undo the, uh, uh, let's see, unbreak. Come on, there you go, unbreak. I don't think there's any way to undo a wood. Oh, I did. Okay, let's put these guys back where they came from. Oh, yeah. Even before going there, what I wanted to show you is this, uh, going back to the uh, smoke, and and smoke and flames. Look at this position here. You've got Lair. 9 minus 1 liter uh, and um, uh, a heavy machine gun with a 468 elite squad. The crew as well as an elite squad and an 88L and you have about two platoons here trying to assault this position. If you have an off-board observer, let's say, with uh, smoke and HE, you can take a risk as to whether, um, whether or not you can use, a, for example, an 80, 80 millimeter mortar and then if this position is dug in, it's even worse 
uh, are more difficult to dislodge them. And instead, what you do is you take your SR, right, convert it to an FFE1, and cause smoke in this position, and then correct, then correcting your your <laughs> yeah you can uh, you can then correct your your FFE1 to an FFE2, call more smoke, and then what you do is you blind these guys. Now as the defender, uh, once once the your opponent is blinded, you can conceal your units, making them more difficult to dislodge in close combat. But I think the safest way to assault this position is by using smoke, as opposed to trying to use uh, regular firepower to attack it, especially with uh, firepower of this nature. Anyway, now back to... Sorry guys, I, I had to um, uh, pause the video there and cut and restart again. A uh, little emergency, but everything's fine. So we were talking about previously about assaulting this position with smoke, and now we are going on with back blast avoidance. So this is an interesting example, okay? Um, to make it work, I think I have to reposition this unit here, and then this unit there, okay? Now, again, it is, um, oh, actually, this guy is too power OP. Let's put Dotsky back where he belongs. Right. Okay. So now it's the German player turn, and uh, we're looking to try and dislodge this guy here. Uh, and obviously, we're going to put this fellow under opportunity fire. And why would we want to do that? Let's say he does have the possibility for a Panzerfaust because it's 1944 and up. There is a chart. Uh, that tells you when the Germans have, have uh, uh, gained the ability to have uh, um, Panzerfausts. And since this guy is in a building, uh, this unit can conceivably check for a Panzerfaust and then dislodge this guy. Now, possibly this guy would want to use smoke to, to allow his buddy to come across or gain wall advantage here. Let's roll it to see what happens. Nope. Um, in any case, let's assume now that this this guy final fired without any success. This guy's marked out of out of uh, is marked with an opportunity fire. He has an LMG, but instead he's going to try and opt for a Panzerfaust. He needs a one, two, or three, four, five, six means he doesn't have it. He has a Panzerfaust. Now to roll on the two hit table, let's say it's 1944, he is two hexes away, and at that range, the two hit for the Panzerfaust is six, greater than or less than six um, at that range. So uh, a six, you gotta add plus two, uh, for the building, that makes it a 4, and minus 1 for the leader, if it's leader directed, makes it a 5. Um, and he doesn't take, he doesn't have to incur the back blast because he's he was marked with opportunity fire. That's great. Now, if he wasn't marked with opportunity fire, he would either have to incur a back blast, which would make the attack nearly impossible. It would be plus 2 for the building, plus 2 in order, in order not to take back blast, okay, and my, and uh, minus one for the um, uh, leadership DRM would make it a three to hit as opposed to a five. Let's roll on it to hit in any case. Ah, missed by one. Huh. Oh well. That's why we got minus two leaders at, uh, leading the attack. But let's say he hit, it would be a sixteen flat. I think that would cower. Well, one check is better than nothing. Oh well, that's uh, the backblast uh, avoidance uh, trick using opportunity fire. I love it. Um, let's go back a little bit. So going back into uh, this, um, we had 
just to recap before we go to number one, the pyro sleeves, the crew control sleeves. Uh, that one I hate, really. It's a love-hate relationship. Skulking, I see nothing wrong with it. You're not going to re reload your rifle out in the open, right? That's that. Doing uh, uh, skulking is being smart, not being stupid. Okay, crew control, because eh, uh, ordinarily I don't think anybody that is, belongs in a tank is going to pop out to act like normal infantry. That is a bit of sleazy. So that that is, I have a love hate relationship with this. And pyro sleaze, it's fine. Use the uh, all your weapons to the best of the, your ability, but not to be be a deliberate um, pyromaniac. There you go. And then here, going on to number two, we, we talked about the backblast avoidance. It's in the rules, so why not use it? And number one, why not? Number one is special ammo. Uh, that too, I have a spe uh, uh, a love hate relationship. Let's go to the board and see what we're talking about, okay? There you go. All right, let's take this tank, for example, here. Move them around. Put everybody in the covered arc. Let's see what kind of info we have here. Ah, not a good tank to do an example with. He only has a Crucible 5 and Smoke Discharger 6. So we need something with... Uh, with special ammo in order to make this example work. Let's go to our counter tray and go to the Axis OB and go for a vehicle. And uh, let's see uh, what we have here. That doesn't even have special info. Uh, let's see. Uh, usually, usually medium tanks have something interesting. Yeah, uh, H. Let's see what this guy brings to the table. Turn him around. Let's say he's already facing that and they'll go to show info. Ooh, we got eight AP. Well, still not uh, applicable, but AP would uh, uh, be applicable had I uh, had uh, an opponent that was stuck in there as well. Let's see now. Go back here and go to Allied OB and go to uh, Vehicle and get ourselves a little uh, T-34 medium tank T-34M43 okay and he's like this and he's there okay. Somehow he safely managed to come up to this fellow without incurring anything. Notice in 1944, he has AP ammo of, um, no, he has APCR of four, uh, yeah, or three in 1944. So it's his turn to take a shot there. It's his prep fire. Um, he needs pretty much uh, an eight, maybe a seven to hit. Plus one for being buttoned up, plus two for the 10, um, and base 10. So, uh, seven to hit, to hit seven. Uh, he hit, and um, he hit, he gets an arc. And now, on the two kill column, I'm not, there's, actually, I am sure there won't be any modifications to the kill. 75L. Is a 17 minus 11 for this guy's frontal armor. So uh, six to kill. Ah, uh, burning wreck. No, no, it's not a burning kill. It's a six, so he needs less than, than half. All right, so he got him. But let's say he didn't get him, right? Um, he can intensify, and with the intensifier shot, he can call in PCR to hit. He doesn't have a PCR. It's as if the shot didn't happen. Now he's getting a second intensifier shot. I think that's how it works. Correct me if I'm wrong. It still doesn't have anything in terms of getting the thing. Anywho, maybe not such a good example, but here it is. 
you can call um, uh, that uh, special ammunition in your first shot or on your intensifier shot. So ultimately, you end up getting three chances on the to hit rule. A special mention, our last example. Uh, berserk trucks. Use trucks to block road paths and, and um, reconnaissance. I don't have uh, road path, but reconnaissance as well. Well, let's see what happens here. So basically, if you're looking at this example, okay, this guy here, is broken and who broke him this guy come defensive fire phase he can route one two five to there he can't go here because this guy is a known enemy unit here's what i got here a beautiful truck a little leader or a half squad with an lmg and instead of going here he has to go in this direction because it can come adjacent. Also, there are some scenarios where uh, the passengers in the trucks are under cloaking counters. So you don't know whether the, who the, what the contents of the truck is. You might be letting somebody behind your lines that is uh, a legitimate a unit that will deny you a road path. Or it'll force you to uh, unconceal or unhip in order to eliminate that unit because you can't afford to have somebody in, in your in your rear. So trucks serve a purpose as well if as the Russian player if you want to cross the road and um, there's a there's an enemy unit here and he takes a shot at the truck here to there uh, he's four, he uh, has uh, four firepower factors, so to kill the, the truck, he needs a five or less on the IF team. Oh, missed by one. There must be some consequences to that. But let's say he wrecked it. Blink. Now, this is a legitimate plus one uh, obstacle to his line of sight. So, non assault movement or assault movement, let's say it's assault movement, he gets a plus one to his dice, dice roll. Then, boink, in the advanced phase, he gets into cover, and this guy is crying to see that the, uh, the uh, Russian unit has crossed the road. Hey guys, 33 minutes and 10 cents. I ranted like a rooster here. What else can I say? How much? Um, I hope you enjoyed the... Uh, uh, video and let me know in the comments what is your favorite ASL uh, sleeves. Now, the manual that I uh, or the player's aid that I looked at, I think I gave some credit to it in the beginning. Let's see if you all can see that. Okay, it's the uh, big black book of ASL sleeves. Uh, and it also talks about uh, it's the last is that verboten sleeves that it is against the rules. I didn't have a chance to um, to read about it. And it says here the original black book of sleeves was written by Jack Jones and posted to the ASL ML uh, back in June 11, 1998. That's a long time ago. Appeared in P uh, Pete Phillips' most excellent view from the Trenches, issue number 20, and uh, there's also some talk about Jack Zeki, Back to Zeki's ASL Paradise, which is where this document originated from. So credit, to, uh, credit and kudos to these authors for this fine document. Um, let me know if you need a link to it. I would be able to give it to you. And there's also uh, an appendix about illegal sleaze wannabes. So that's good to re uh, read before you go to our tournament, I think. Guys, with that said, 35 minutes. 
into this video. I thought it would only last 15 minutes. Um, like I said before, I'm not sure if I already did a video on this one, on this topic, but it's always good to revisit. So Sleaze Tactics 202. And again, I'd like to thank all the viewers that uh, have been with me since the start and the new viewers that are on board. Um, I really appreciate it and I see that the channel is growing. Do tell your friends about it and like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.